Well, it seems like I'm making a lot of videos about getting blocked, censored, um, yeah, and all of that stuff. I've never <laughs> encountered so much of it in my life, and this is all in under a year's span. And when did it really start? I mean, August, September last year, when I really started to notice Nightcap on Minjimble because of Max Egan. I mean, the irony, isn't it, that they put out a video to promote Nightcap on Minjimble to get people to buy into it, <laughs> and it does the opposite. It has the complete opposite effect on me. I see all these, um, yeah, lots of concerns anyway, put it that way. I've done lots of videos on them anyway. But then, you know, what I was saying about Max Egan too, and all of the things around him, well, I got banned off BitChute twice. <laughs> Two of my channels shut down because I was trying to expose Max Egan. And so I thought, yeah, BitChute is a waste of time. It's better to deal with the ones that I know rather than ones that well, are supposed to be free speech, but free speech as long as you only are within the agenda of what they want to create. So they're no more a controlled narrative than mainstream media is. And they call themselves alternative. No, they're not. They're controlling a narrative as well. So I got banned there. And then there was this thing with... Uh, Billy Fitzgerald in, um, well, when was it? The 18th of January when I got delivered the three letters. <laughs> All, you know, around Julia Norman and what she had done. It's like, got nothing to do with her, mate. And you cannot plaster other people's judgments and injunctions on anybody else. You want to do that? Take me to court, you know, and prove it. <laughs> yeah, prove it. So um, that happened on the 18th of January, just after my first Facebook, Balance the Scales, got shut down and I had to start up a new one. Now, I've, what I've done, because, yes, Bounce Back Now has been, well, it's still up at the moment and so is the other one, Return of the Phoenix, but that won't last for too much longer because my profile's gone. <laughs> so, yeah, it's uh, not... It, it, they've given me so many days to object to it and when that happens, it'll be permanently disabled or whatever. I'm not even going to bother with it because I have a fair idea what it's over and I intend to actually eliminate that ability to happen in the future. But anyway, to because in January it took me quite some time to reload all of those posts onto Bounce Back. But because the page is still there, I thought, well, I'll just go through and I'll copy and paste all of them. I'll create a PDF so that that way I can upload the PDF. You can scroll through and it's certainly a lot easier. You can even do a keyword search on a PDF and find specific things that you want. And it's all on there, all the posts. So you, all you've got to do is click on them and it'll take you to the links. I haven't changed any of those. Like there'll be 18 posts in there that have got um, links that will lead to the 18 um, videos that they've had removed. <laughs> Should have checked today because they've probably had some more of them removed. I mean, it's very entertaining. Because look over here. I've got such a huge following. 20 people like this, 25 people follow this. <laughs> so, you know, I'm just so big and so famous that I'm worth, you know, they've got to shut my voice down because of what I'm saying. But... We all know it's not how many, it's how far a ripple. When you drop something in the water, you watch that wave go out and it ripples for quite some time. 
And it's also a known thing that, like, with advertising, that it's the one customer out of ten that doesn't um, like your service or whatever that is really going to do the most damage because they will tell the most people. Whereas nine out of ten people that might like your service just won't mention it to anyone. So ultimately the only advertising you're going to get is bad advertising. And you see that's what these people represent to somebody like NICAP or Minjimble. Bad advertising. They know that there are these number of people out there that are following what's going on, keeping up to date and doing the best that they can to actually ensure that the, the larger community and the well-being of all people is looked after rather than just the selected interests of what really, I think it's nothing more than just another greedy development. That's all. And it's not going to help anybody out. It's not going to provide housing where it's needed. You know, where for all the things that you could do with the money to actually provide a lot of cheaper, more affordable accommodations for people, this is not one of them. It is most definitely not. It is a huge investment that is going to cost in the best part of 300000 to buy in. And it's also going to cost you council planning for your own place, all the constructions and everything for your own home. And if you haven't paid for a share into it and you're going to do vendor financing through them, there's all those payments on top of that as well. So it's not affordable accommodation and it's not helping out those that actually do need the housing. And all throughout Australia, there is a housing crisis and it's affecting all people. And it is something that really we all should be more focused on is providing sustainable ways to actually provide affordable housing for people and also not create like imagine say that nightcap on Minjimble was affordable housing essentially what you're doing is creating a very click um, clicky group but even nightcap on Minjimble say that they intend to create lots of little clicks because Tyler Tolman doesn't want to smell your barbecue you know, and that's how they intend to not only be one community, but segregated within that community. And I do look at it as segregation because, you know, when Tyler Tolman says, I don't want to smell your barbecue, well, don't buy there. If someone was going to move next door to you that liked to have a barbecue, well, then the blocks are too small too, <laughs> obviously. Or go, go somewhere else on your land for that. I mean, the thing being that there are already conditions on what you expect of your neighbour. And if you don't fit in with those expectations, they don't want you in that, that street or that little clique. So it is really segregating people. It is not actually creating one harmonious community where you have to appreciate that every single human being on this planet is a unique individual. They have got their own thoughts, their own dreams and expectations and their own problems, their own history, their own strengths and their own weaknesses. And when you're trying to allocate certain mindsets and say, right, you go there as one group and you be that, you're going to end up with a lot of mindsets that will end up clashing. Because um, as much as I would like to say differently, there are too many vegans that I've actually met that, and I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of comedy done about vegans because they, it's like a religion to them and they've got to convert people to it. It, it is actually very, um, well, whoever would have thought that people would have been talking to you so much because, well, I like ham. <laughs> or you know every now and again I might like to have a steak so what 
And if I had a barbecue once every blue moon, because I like to have that, and that's the thing that my food choices shouldn't upset other people. It, it, it's just, yes. And this is what came about with the PC generation. Anyway, I'm getting a little bit sidetracked. I only wanted to make this a short one <laughs> to show you my new channel. Because after my last video, the thumbnail, I was looking for a thumbnail to just stick on there. And I saw the, the big bad wolf one and I thought, yeah, I like that. So um, I actually used that instead of my own photographs in uh, the new one. So, yes, anyway, to cut a long story short, this PDF here has got everything that's on Bounce Back page. It's 46 pages. Uh, this one here is where I was first blocked on Balance of Scales, and they're all the post posts that I uploaded, or re reposted, sorry. And from there on up, and, well... If I go down to this page, that's number 20 of 46. So there's 27 pages, or 26 and a bit pages, of posts and links uh, before the 12th of January that I re-pasted. Um, then we go all the way up. Hang on, I'll just fast forward that. <laughs> up to the top, to where this one goes down here we go my profile's blocked and that's all the posts down there that's from page three <laughs> so three to what 19 is the posts that are on bounce back plus the other ones now I'm not going to re-upload all these posts because uh, I'll give you the link and you'll just click on that and easily accessible and the thing being too is that I'm sure they'll appreciate that I've made it a lot easier for them at Nightcap on Minjimbu to go through and oh is there anything we can get it for <laughs> go for it eh uh, anyway so yes hang on I'll just show you the new one okay so this is my new Facebook page from Bulla Bulla to Nightcap on Minjimbul, the story continues. And there's a few posts on there. There's the link for this PDF. And uh, yeah, yeah, that's the picture. <laughs> I like the picture. <laughs> it was like after all these things that, you know, the people try and censor you and shut you up. It's like, oh, for crying out loud. You know what, I have always been renowned for being stubborn. In fact, ever since I was a kid, I was told that I would cut off my own nose to spite my face. Well, actually, recently I let them cut off half my nose. <laughs> yeah, that's a different medical story anyway. Well, so that's 18 videos now that they've uh, affected. <laughs> And, uh, well, this is my third page. <laughs> well, you could say fourth, but the other one, the other two came together. They just, you know, same page off the same profile. So they decided that my profile <laughs> violated community standards. And the irony of that, I don't think it's me that's actually offended the community standards. I think it's the Voxes. So, um... I've found an alternative means to actually bring them to Facebook without violating those community standards. So we'll see how it goes, eh? And, uh, yes. <laughs> now, over the last couple of days, I have had several people contact me with regards to some, well, I suppose you could say breaking situations. <laughs> well, news breaking, but uh, they're also, uh, yes, well, behind the scenes. And it, it's interesting too that it, it, several months ago, before I, I actually had my Facebook profile shut down, I was actually connected to my tribal Anon. And uh, 
he disappeared. After that, I could not find him and he didn't contact me again. So that was very unfortunate. So there's been, you know, a lot of different uh, developments in uh, different areas in the last two days. And uh, I was going to present a so far look at the accounting records that I've been able to piece together. See, I was sent a um, copy of the court book, or part of the copy of the court book of the um, Wollumbin Horizons liquidation case. And I was looking through that and there's some information in there. And there's lots of information that have been that has been coming through from many people actually in the last couple of weeks there has just been so much coming in and thank you very much I I'm really not sounding like when I am saying that there's so much coming in that it's hard to actually keep up with it all and it's uh, it's really good because it's really progressing things along in so many areas so I'm really happy with that so you know a little um, what's expected to happen I mean <laughs> I, I expect this one to go down sooner or later too so I'll just do the same thing and this PDF over here will just get have more pages in it so um, yes yeah, so it, it just won't stop me I'll just keep coming because yeah I'll cut off my own nose to spoil my own face <laughs> and that's the kind of determination that it can expect um, if I want to achieve something, I want to achieve it. And yes, I expect hurdles. I've worked in the business world. I know that you can't achieve anything without hurdles. It's par for the course. And that's just the way it is. And when they happen, it's like, well, at least that's one hurdle out of the way. And you just take it in your stride as you know it's going to happen. So, yeah, it's not unexpected. It's like, yep, yeah, good, that's another one over. <laughs> but you see, each time they shut something down, each time they censor it, you've got to ask yourself about how many people that they think I'm actually affecting. And what I'm actually saying that my philosophy is, is if, if they are upfront and honest, They've got nothing to fear from anything I say because they can completely invalidate me by proving me wrong. That's all they have to do. But instead, they play this game. And it starts with censorship, threats from lawyers, and all these other things of, yes, <laughs> keeps you on your toes. But each one of those is an action and it goes in amongst all the other actions of those that have participated in Nightcap or Minjimbal since at least 2014 to right now in 2021. And they've had more players added at the lower rung of the investors buying in. But the upper management level, that's the same people. Mark Darwin recently appearingly got out. But you know, with someone like Mark Darwin, you just never know. And, uh, well, we're only on to part seven that I've released of part 36. And just a little secret, well, there might be more coming. <laughs> yes, I don't know how much or what it might mean, but there might be a lot more to the story than part 36 parts. Well, I know there's more to the story than the 36 parts of the Voxes. There's also documents and evidence that has been coming through from multiple sources. And uh, it's just, as I said, it is really starting to put everything together to take action on. And, uh, yeah... Anyway, so I just thought I'd uh, let you know that uh, I've started up a new Facebook page to put all the links on and uh, if anyone wanted to contact me through um, PM there, private message. As I know, commenting on <laughs> 
YouTube uh, is public, isn't it? And I know that there are some things that you don't want public. And I appreciate that. We all are the same. We have private things and we have public things. We're all like that. <laughs> and some things are better, better left private until they become public in a much bigger way. Hmm. Yes, there's lots of things happening out there in many different facets that are going on with Nightcap on Minjimble. Things are really starting to move in a lot of different directions and uh, a larger picture is actually starting to form. Very interesting. But I can't give too many details away at this stage because, um, well, I haven't fully found out myself and there are some things that would would need to be checked out anyway because the last thing I want to do is bring more guesses because the whole purpose of this exploration of what's been going on at NICAP on Minjimble is to provide the documentation to show what I believe has been their activity since Adrian Brannock and Mark Darwin and Cherie Stokes and even Richard Mote. He was, all of those people that I just named were involved with Truthology, Freedom Summits and Creative Foundation. I have seen emails for all of them, for all of those um, uh, particular uh, Truthology things associated with Mark Darwin. And also uh, the Rain Rainmaker Eco from the Rainmaker Eco Investments. You see, Rainmaker Eco Investments that ran the Freedom Summits for a certain stage um, that involved Blair Beatty too. I'm yeah, pretty sure from memory that this is the one anyway. But um, they had a falling out with Blair Beatty because. He actually wanted to achieve something on a realistic scale where, and to a certain degree, I think that Mark Darwin wanted to actually achieve a community as well. But for Adrian Brannock, it's just purely about developing it, making money out of it and setting himself up. And he didn't give a stuff about anything else. And the thing is too, I'm just waiting for, uh, well, Philip Dixon was also involved with all the all of those that I just named as well. Adrian Brannock, Mark Darwin, Cherie Stokes, Richard Mote, uh, yes, and Philip Dixon. Now, I've already done videos where I've said that Cherie Stokes goes by several names, same with Richard Mote. I mean, they all seem to have their nicknames, like AB has got his, uh, Adrian Brannock has got his profile as Andrew Brennan on Facebook. He's been known to call himself Mr. X and any other number names. Sorry, I got distracted there. <laughs> number of names. So, yes, the the people that have been involved right at the beginning of Bulla Bulla were even there with Truthology, Creative Foundation, Freedom Summits and all of these other things. So there's this strong predominance of those that were in the past that they're there now and it's also been wondered how Derek Zilman got involved like here's a businessman that you would think would have better sense than to get involved with this project but he's actually got involved with it how did he get involved how did they even like we've found out through the Voxes that Derek Zilman lent them money because they talk about it and they think about how good it was that, oh, look, he was doing something really nice for us because he was putting off deferring or giving payment or said, no, no, you know, as long as you've got the business set up. Well, you know, of course that's a biz good business decision if you've given over money and saying, look, I'm content to just let that just sit the way that it is, you know, you don't have to pay me back right now because, um, yeah, use that, go do what you need to do, just make a success of it. So how did they actually get someone like Derek Zilman to actually invest money in the, the sense of, of that loan? 
that they talk about in the Voxes. So it's, yes, maybe he was also part of Truthology, the Truthology movement. And actually, if you go right up to the top, whoops, one of my last posts was warning to Avalon members about Truthology, scam alert. <laughs> and there were a few of those that floated around at the, uh, I think that, well, that would obviously be an old thread because Truthology doesn't exist anymore. We know that. We've had to do a lot of digging on the Wayback Machine and go through lots and lots of different things to actually find out and prove through documentation the links between these people that exist today and existed in 2014 right at the start of Bulla Bulla. And the actions that they've participated in over the years is actually largely a paper trail now. And it's just a matter of piecing it all together and using that documented evidence to tell the story. And that story is to <laughs> those that are going to take action on it. And uh, yes, I'm looking at that very closely down the track now because things are starting to come together where I can show the affiliations where they are a tight-knit group and an organization and whether they are criminal or not is actually up for official investigations to undertake and of course those official investigations um, I know that uh, the ATO phoenixing force, once you put in a complaint, uh, you will not be advised, you will just have to trust in the process that they are acting on that. And it has been encouraged that anybody that would put in a complaint about the phoenixing of 3222, that they welcome it. Because anybody that can provide a uh, any more of an explanation like I might explain a story a particular way and leave out certain things whereas someone else might put those things in and add a little bit more that I didn't know so if everybody does uh, their own complaint with as much evidence and documented evidence as you can provide that's what they want at the Phoenixing Task Force and to when you provide them evidence to only provide them with copies not originals I don't know how you'd actually provide them with anything other than copies anyway because everything's done online it couldn't be an original <laughs> it'd only ever be a copy because you'd upload it onto their site but anyway so I suppose if you mailed it into them not to mail in originals I mean, most people know not to to mail in original documents. You only send photocopies because once, well, then you don't have the original to send anybody else, do you? No, everybody else just gets a copy. So anyway, that's, um, I think I've yacked on enough, bought a bit of an update. And um, the people to watch out for that are in the upper circle, the in a upper circle, inner circle, upper management, you know, the thickest thieves as they like the saying goes, those that are all tight together. And each one, it's interesting too to see the dynamics, is that each one, uh, they're all in this same top level upper management group together. But there are certain facets that each one of them seems to be ignorant of what the others are up to. And uh, yes, it, it's quite interesting. I suppose when they're involved in it, they can't see it. But me, looking from the outside in, it, it's kind of very apparent that they're, they're all playing games with each other in the inner circle, so to speak, or the upper management level. You know, they, they have this camaraderie illusion when really, you know, anyway, enough said. Who's afraid of the big bad wolf? Not me. <laughs>
That used to be on TV when I was a kid. Back in the days when Disney was actually innocent. Yeah, they just kind of wrecked Disney for me after you find out certain things and yeah. Anyway, I'll catch you on the next video. <laughs> Bye.